Okay. All right. Can everybody see the slide and hear me? Let me know. Here's my pointer. Can everyone hear me? Okay, wonderful. Well, I thought I would do a little holiday message today because this is the last uh, trading day of the year for me. And also, uh, you know, it was an important year for, for me because it's the first year that I've ever had my company. I started uh, the Stock Swoosh LLC in December of last year, 2012. And so it's, it's over a year now since I've had the company. So I wanted to do a little message today, and this is uh, motivational as well as an expression of gratitude for all the people uh, who have come to me to learn information about the market this year. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone here. Thank you to everyone that is not here that has been loyal to me this year, watching my videos, and also taking the class. You know, uh, it's one of these things where I never in my life thought that I would be teaching people how to trade the stock market. And now all of a sudden in a year, I've taught quite a few people. And now I'm trading every day with everyone that's in here. And I just want to say thank you. You know, I really appreciate uh, your loyalty. I appreciate you uh, listening to me every day talk for four hours. Uh, you know, I appreciate you trusting in me that I'm making the right decisions to take trades, um, putting your faith in me to learn the information I taught you and the class and, uh, and for your friendship. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone here and everyone again, that's not here that, uh, has done the golden gap class. Uh, you know, one person can run their own company. I'm doing that. One person can do it. I worked very hard this year. Uh, I, I, you know, didn't anticipate when I started out learning how to trade that I'd ever teach someone how to do it. And yet, in the process of teaching people in the last year, my trading has grown tremendously. So even though I worked hard this year teaching people, it was worth it because my trading has evolved. And why it just goes to show you, you know, the more you look at charts and the more you study, the better you get. And because I'm talking and looking at charts every day for four hours and then doing videos after the fact, I'm constantly looking at stuff and constantly learning new information. I'm constantly seeing things in the charts. And of course, that's what I'm teaching to you. So I just want to say thank you. And that's part of the message today. You know, everything has a season in life and during the calendar year. And winter, which, which it's winter. I mean, it's winter here in the Northeast. It's winter wherever you are. Everything is a season. And now is really the time to go within. You, you spend more time inside, indoors in the winter than you do in the summer. And when you're inside, you have time. You have time to read books. You have time to think. You have time to write in your journal. You have time to work on your trading plan. You have time for yourself. Uh, and you're not outside doing outdoor activities. And so it's a good time to go within and meditate and think. Think about what you want your life to be like in the next calendar year, what you want to accomplish in 2014, what your goals are uh, specifically for trading. You know, what are you looking to achieve in the upcoming year? Think about this. You can write it down or just think about it, in, you know, in your head. I think motivation is a big part of trading. And if I you know, talk every day for four hours, I could probably talk every day and say things motivational. And, and yet I'd probably be talking for eight hours instead of four. But this is a really uh, must have if you're going to stick with this business. You got to keep yourself motivated. There's lots of things that can motivate you. But you absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, have to stay motivated to keep going, to keep doing this. What does motivation really even mean? It means the act or instance of motivating or providing with a reason to act in a certain way, the state of condition of being motivated, something that motivates, inducement, incentive. It's like an incentive. What's the incentive to trade the market? It's to be profitable. What's the incentive to trade? It's to be profitable and only work a job where you work an hour and a day. Or like Diane was saying, only make the money and you're done in a couple of minutes in the morning and you're done. The motivation could be a million things while you're doing this. Fast money, short work hours, part-time job if you have another job to have extra money, or retirement. If you're close to retirement, you want to have money coming in for something else that's outside of retirement. So there's lots of motivations while you're doing this. Maybe you just want to work from home. Maybe the idea of just working from home is motivation for you. Maybe that's motivation enough. You know, because a lot of people don't like having to go in and commute to jobs every day, and it's costly. 
Whereas working from home, all you need is a computer. Dave is saying, thank you for your help. Looking forward to getting a return on your money and investment and time and getting educated by me. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. So who or what gets you motivated to train? Friends. Your friends. Your friends could get you motivated. Your family. If you talk to them about your training, some of you probably do. A teacher like me. I can get you motivated to train. A book. Maybe you read a book. Maybe it's some great training book that gets you motivated to train. Gets you excited to do it. There's lots of them out there. If you need some ideas, you can always email me. I can refer you to some motivational books. An experience. Maybe you have some experience and that motivates you and thinks, gosh, you know, I can do this. Or maybe it's experience where something bad happens to you in your current career and then you say, wait a minute, I got to get out of this career. I have to do something else. And then that makes you more motivated to do better in your trading. The market. The market is a motivator for me to trade because I see all the money moving around in it every single day. In all directions, by the way. Money, money obviously is a huge motivation for me. And it's the number one reason why I began trading in the first place. And yourself, you, 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 and you alone. I have to be really the person that keeps yourself motivated. Because in the end, all these things, your friends, your family, a teacher, a book, experience, the market, and money, all of them can motivate you. But if you, you yourself are not motivated to trade, then it doesn't matter what these things are. It really, you're not going to get going. You're not going to get to do it. So who or what keeps you motivated to train? The same things, the same exact things. Friends, family, a teacher, a book, and experience, the market, money, and yourself. So not only do you have to get motivated to start out in the first place, which everyone here has been or you wouldn't be here, but you also have to keep yourself motivated. That's the thing. So it's not like you get all excited, you go out, you train for the marathon, and then you run it and it's over. Training isn't like that. You know, it's not a race and then you're over. It's like you have to stay with it and stay with it and stay with it and stay with it. And you have to keep yourself motivated. So how do you get motivated? Use whatever resources you can to get yourself motivated to trade each day. Like every single day you should do this. And not only that, each week. Having a good support system is key. I think the room is a positive influence. Uh, you know, I try to be a positive influence on you to get you motivated and keep you motivated. And not only that, to tell you when there's days not to do anything. But, you know, you hear me excited when I'm making money. Uh, you know, the money excites you when I see it in the P&L. Also, having dreams can be very motivational. And I think it's important that everyone have dreams, whatever they are. And they're different for all of us. They can be big. They can be small. The size of the dream doesn't matter as long as you have them because they help you get motivational. It could be, it could be just something as, as small as I'm dreaming that I want to make this much money in earnings season in the month of January. Like that could be your dream, your 100% focus. And then you go and you do it. So it could be a small dream, it could be a short time frame, it could be a big dream, it could be a big time frame. And again, friends, family can be a great motivation for you as well, specifically if you have a spouse or kids and you want to take care of them and you want to do well then in your trading and you certainly don't want to lose money trading uh, if you are taking care of people, whoever they are. It could be a parent even. So the people in your life and your surroundings have a lot to do with getting you motivated and keeping you motivated. It's, it's the keeping motivated that I find that people struggle with. A lot of people are motivated to trade, but then they want to quit really quickly. You have to get motivated and you have to keep yourself motivated. Before 2014, do a clean sweep of all the negative people and influences in your life. Set it up that you can have an incredibly successful trading year in 2014. And I want you to seriously consider what I'm saying. I actually did this like a year ago. Like I started doing this like a year ago where I was in this thing where I was really starting to recognize, actually it started like two years ago, it started like two years ago, where I started to just lose touch with people. They, as, as my training was improving, I was disconnecting myself with some people that I was friends with before. Okay. So I want you to seriously think about this. If there's people in your life that are bringing you down, okay. Just do a clean sweep. Just kiss them on their way and wish them well, okay? This isn't about, uh, you know, being angry with people or anything like that. This is like looking at yourself and your own well-being and going within like I was talking about and recognizing that, you know what? I'm moving in a different direction than some of these people. And if they don't support you, it can be tough. 
okay? Specifically, if they're negative about you and your life and trading or whatever you have to do. Because in the end, you know what? The best person to make the right decisions for you is who? Who? Who is the best person to make decisions for you? Anyone want to guess? Anyone want to answer? Anyone? Anyone at all? Who's the best person to make decisions for you? <laughs> Nobody wants to answer. <laughs> yes. Dave says, me. Your own self, Diane says. Edwin says, myself, too. Great job, everyone. You all got it right. It's you. Okay? The problem is, as much as we all know this, and it's true, that and when we have people in our life that we're close to or we love, sometimes they can influence us and then we, you know, get stressed or it becomes a headache or, or we get fuzzy and then we question our trust in ourselves. The biggest, 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 biggest thing about trading is you have to trust yourself and your decisions. If, if, if someone would say to me a defined conviction, really define the conviction, Melissa, what does conviction really mean to you? You know, it's really, uh, uh, I trust my own decisions. I have 100% conviction. I trust myself 100% this is going to work. Now, am I right every time I say that? No. Am I right a lot? Absolutely. Does it help me trade better? You betcha. So it's a trust in myself. I trust myself and my own decisions about my trading. Okay. And you have to trust yourself and your own decisions about trading too. Diana is saying, yes, yeah, surround yourself by the right motivation. Exactly. Exactly. So how do you stay motivated? Well, the same things that got you motivated in the beginning. At the beginning, think about at the beginning when you first first said, I think I want to do this. I want to take this Golden God class. I want to be in this room. Think about that. The same things that got you motivated in the beginning can keep you motivated. They really can. And when you need motivation, you have to look at the bigger picture. This is where I think a lot of people miss the boat as well. They're too short-sighted. And me as well when I started out five years ago. I was too short-sighted. There's no question about it. No question about it. Tom will be the first person to tell you in here when we first met, I was too short-sighted. The bigger picture counts. I've changed. I've realized the bigger picture is what matters. The bigger picture is important. You know, we've talked about this a million times as far as looking, you know, just at day by day by day by day by day in the bigger picture about the kind of money you can make. It's not just about one day. You have to take a loss one day. It is not the end of the world. Trust me, I know I'm speaking from experience because when I would have to take a loss one day, I feel like it would be the end of the world. And it's not the end of the world. I would get up the next day and trade and nine times out of 10 make money. So some days I'll take a loss. It doesn't matter. You have to look at the bigger picture. What are you, where are you going? What are you accomplishing? What are you learning? Are you really doing it? Some days in trading, you must take a loss. And the bigger picture, you have to look at where you're at. There's 200 trading days in a year. Making money trading is about the bigger picture. There are 200 trading days in the year. That's a lot of days. And so some of those days, there will not be any good gaps. There will not be any gaps at rate over 20 points. How many days in there will be good rated gaps? There will be a lot, a lot, okay? So you have to look at the bigger picture when you're doing this. And guess what? If you're looking at the bigger picture, that means that you can't give up or quit in a short time frame because then you're, you're, you're not even seeing the bigger picture. Then you're not even giving yourself a chance. You're like killing it before you even give yourself a chance to succeed, basically. So being in the, in, in the trading room with me helps you stay motivated. And I, and I hope I try to do that every day when I'm in here to encourage you. I want you to be patient with yourself going into 2014 and specifically if you're going to trade the next two weeks, okay? I am not, but if you are and if you want to trade, then I want you to be patient and careful. This is not a time of the year where there's lots to do. If you're new, I want you to be patient because I don't want you to take unnecessary risk. If you are advanced, I still want you to be patient and don't increase your risk until earnings season next year in January. That's the right thing to do, okay? Because the worst thing you can do is decide to up your risk too early, pre-earning season, because earning season gives so much opportunity, and then you have like two bad days in a row, and then you feel like you got to go back to your original risk. You wait to increase your risk at earning season, you're ready. You'll know when you're ready when you do it, and it starts to work out, you'll be good. You wait till earning season, there'll be a lot to do. You'll see if you're really ready, because you're going to test yourself when you increase your risk. 
you, you always do, I do too. You're, you're testing yourself. Can I handle this? What can I do? So on and so forth. It takes courage to trade every day. It takes courage to run a live trading room and trade in front of people. And I give myself credit for that in the last year. This is the first year I ever ran a room where I trade in front of people every day. At some days after I would be done, I'd think, what am I doing this? This is nuts. I don't have anyone to call and talk to about it because I don't have anyone else that I'm friends with that's doing it. But I am. And as time has gone on, I've realized that I do have the courage to do it. I have the courage to do it. I have the courage to take losses on days when things don't work, when you're here with me. I have the courage to, to be profitable. I have the courage to call my trains, be they good or bad, in front of you. And luckily, a lot of them work, which is why, you know, I'm making money. But it takes courage for you to even be here, for you to be here every day and trust in me to make the right calls. It takes courage for you to risk your own money in the market because you are risking your own money in the end, just like I'm risking mine, and that takes courage. It also takes courage to learn something new. All the new stuff I taught you this year and anything new I'm going to teach you in the future. Because as I continue to get better, I'll keep teaching. I'll keep teaching whatever I know. I never hold anything back. You guys know that in here already. It also takes courage to get up and trade the next day when you lost the day before. It takes a lot of courage to do that. But you must do this when you're learning. And you really have to have this thing called amnesia. Amnesia is a loss of a large block of interrelated memories, or it could be small, just like one loss, but it could be a big one. It's complete or partial loss of a memory caused by shock. That's really the proper, proper wording there, shock. It's like total amnesia. You have a day where you don't do anything right. You just, just, you don't. Every trade you take seems to be a bust. Maybe you have a week where you don't do anything right. Nothing's working. You're taking bad entries. You don't put the stop at the right place. You get taken out too early. You you don't get out at the right place. I mean, just everything. You've still got to get up the next day or the next week. And you've got to have amnesia because otherwise, how can you go on? If you keep living and going round and round and round and round and round about the stuff that you did yesterday, you're never going to let it go. And, and that isn't going to help you move forward. You know, you do have to be able to move forward with this. And part of this is having amnesia. This, again, is another reason why many people struggle with trading as a career. I'm talking about as a career. To do this as a career, you really do have to have amnesia because you have to be able to actually get up the next day and do it. Because if this is your source of income, if you're relying on this as your actual source of income, you do have to have amnesia. Now, you might want to take a day off. If you have a really bad day today and you want to take a day off tomorrow, but then you still have to get back on the horse then the next day. You have to have amnesia whenever it is. If you take one day off, then two days later, you have to have the amnesia. It's, you know, you have to let it go if this is your livelihood. I think a lot of people struggle with that, okay? Dave's saying like yesterday, he had slippage. And he, he, yes, well, right. And you can't just pretend then, you, you can't just get up today and be worried then about having slippage on taking something else. You've got to just, you've got to do it. You've got to just get up and do it, okay? That's part of what it is. And, you know, when you are a trader, you also have to have this quality of, about strength. And we've talked about this before. I don't care whether you're a man or a woman. I don't care if you're old or you're young. It doesn't matter. You do have to be a very strong person to trade the market. And if you want to do this for a living, you really have to be a strong person. If this is going to be your career. And I think a, a, a lot of you here, uh, you want it to be, or it already is. You do have to have a strong will and a strong character to do this. Because there will be days when things don't work out right, right away. And you either got to change them and fix them and make it right. You had to take the first trade's bad. The second trade, you got to make it good. You got to, it takes a strength, a strength of character to do that. Other than just quitting and giving up. You can't be weak. You can't be a baby about it. You can't be weak. You have to be strong. The market is not cut out for weaklings. It eats them alive. It chots them up to bits and pieces. You got to be strong. You like the comment about amnesia? You've developed that little by little. Yeah, you got to. I mean, I don't care what you have to do to have the amnesia. Go out and, you know, go out to the bar the, the night, the day you have a bad day. Go out with your friends. 
go to the movies, go on a date, do whatever you need to do to just wash off the day. But you do need to do something so that you can get up clean and fresh the next day. Lots of times, if I don't have a good day, I do not look at charts then the rest of the day. Like, I don't want to do any videos. I don't, I don't want to do anything the rest of the day that has anything to do with the market. I just want to totally do nothing that has to do with the market. And, and it, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. The other thing that you really need, the quality you need to be good at this and stay motivated is you have to have this quality of clarity. It's clarity of mind, clarity of purpose. Uh, this is an inner clarity, okay? Knowing why am I doing this in the first place? Am I clear on why I'm doing this? Am I just doing this haphazardly? You know, there's a lot of people that are haphazard about this trading thing. It's kind of like a sidebar for them. Like they have a regular job. And then they're like kind of in the market, but they're doing a little bit every day, but they're not like 100% serious about it. So they're really not clear, not clear in the direction, not clear where they're going to be in a year from now, not clear where they're going to be six months from now, but yet they're trading, they're risking, they're risking money. They're actually risking money trading and they have no clarity about the direction why they're doing it at all. Be clear. This doesn't mean you have to be a career trader, but it does mean you need to say, I am doing this for this purpose. I'm doing this because I want to make part-time extra money this much each each month so that I can retire in five years, or I'm making this extra money each month so that I can go to Disney World for a fabulous vacation with my family this summer for two weeks. Whatever it is, you need to have clarity, a purpose of why you're doing this or why you're risking money in the first place. Because if you're not clear on your purpose and have no clue why you're risking the money or just doing this for fun or for something to do, it won't have enough of a seriousness for you and you won't see good results. Because trading is a serious business, even if you're doing this part time. It's serious because you're risking money. And if you don't take it seriously, the market smells it. It smells it as soon as you walk into the trade or walk into the room. And then you'll end up losing and it's kind of just doesn't make sense. You can have a laissez-faire attitude about trading. Even if you're doing it part time, you have to be very clear, clear and serious for about one hour a day. And that's really not that big of a deal. Two hours a day at the most. I've talked about this a lot. I, I said this to Tom years ago. It's like, I just want to be a monk. I just want to be a monk. And now I'm being a monk in front of people. And by golly, it, isn't challen it is challenging. But it is this monk-like state where I'm in my own space. And I want you to be in your own space too, where you decide and determine if you're prepared to take the risk, whatever the risk is you're taking. And if you have the conviction in what you're doing and you're prepared and you're ready and you're in your happy place. It's the monk-like state. You know, I have the room closed off. You cannot see other people's comments. That keeps the monk-like state intact for you. I know some people like it and some people don't. It's also for me to keep me in the monk state. If there was too much chitter-chatter off topic, then I wouldn't be able to stay in my monk state. And it is important for me to do that so I can call quality picks and entries for us. But it's also important for you. If you are chitty chatting with people during the day, then you're not going to be in your monk state. And I want you to be in a monk state in the morning. And this isn't about religion. This is just about being in a state where you are centered and you're in balance and you know what you're doing and you're making rational choices and you're prepared to do so. Okay. Like to the point that you could actually verbalize to someone what your choice is. Now, no one in here is talking while they're taking their entries. You're listening to me and you're pressing the buttons. But if you had to, could you speak it? Or do you have absolutely no idea what you're doing, why you're doing it, or how you're sizing yourself and you're just totally out of your body? Or are you in a monk state? Because just because you're uh, taking my trades doesn't mean you can't be in your own monk state. Okay? I think this is important. So it's a good time of year to talk about this, okay, specifically in December because it's low volume. And, and this is something to think about for next year if you've made mistakes this year where you traded when there weren't good gaps. Why you must wait for the good ones. You must wait for the good ones. You must, okay, you just, you have to. And that is why the rating system that I've developed and taught you is so great. This is why you have to keep yourself under control because if you don't, you won't get the goodies. You have to stay motivated, number one. And if you don't, you will miss the good ones. You say, oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm totally losing motivation. And then you know what? You get up one day, there's three great gaps and you aren't motivated to take any of them or take any size. And then you miss them all. And then you get motivated, but the next day you get up and there isn't any good. So you, you have to stay motivated. You have to be there every day to see them, to find them, to get them, to rate them. Because if you give up, you'll walk away empty handed. 
And the market could care less, okay? The market could care less if you walk away with a pile of money or empty-handed. The market doesn't really care, okay? Don't get caught up in the negativity so that you don't do the right thing when the market hands it to you. I always say this. The, market, I get, the market's got to give it to me. The market's giving it to me today. Let the market give it to me. The market's got to give it to me. In fact, I kind of said that this morning I felt like the market wasn't giving it to me today. It, you know, but I looked for things to do. You know, in the end, the market gives it to me a lot of days of the year. But some days it doesn't. And you have to wait for the good ones. People get so tripped up with the moves of the market. People have a hard time having faith every day, no matter what happens. And you do have to keep the faith. Because you have to know and recognize and have faith that, that you're going to get good ones, that you are going to get the goodies, that in January, earnings season is going to come around, there's going to be a million good gaps. So what does that mean? It means if you don't get a lot of good gaps in the next two weeks and you want to trade, that you don't go and give, give money to the market needlessly. Why? You've got to wait for the good ones. Okay? So stick to the program. Don't deviate. I clipped this here from Brad. This was the yesterday's Brad, and obviously today it had a nice move too. If something's working, you do it. If something's not working, you don't do it. You stick to the program. Go after the ones that are working. Leave the ones that aren't working aside. Like SWFT didn't work today. We didn't even, I didn't even take five minutes to look at that chart then today once I saw what it did in the morning. I didn't even look at it. Okay? You got to stick to the plan of action. Don't deviate. Don't start trying to short things that have rallied up five green bars in a 15-minute chart. You got to stick to the program. So what to do when things don't work right? Is it your fault? Is it? Is it your fault? Do you blame yourself? Do you hate yourself? Do you lose sleep at night? No! It's not your fault when things don't work right. It isn't, okay? It's not the market's fault either. It's not a, anyone or anything's fault. It's just trading. This is, the, this is the business. This is the business we're in that we've chosen. This is it if you want to do it. It's just about the fact that the mathematical odds sometimes set up to have plays fail, okay? Why did CIE fail yesterday? It just did. Stock was down a million miles. People took profits into the rally. It fell off the planet and broke the number into the pre-market. It just failed. It, it just did. There's no reason, no explanation. Sometimes these things happen. It's not the market's fault. It's not your fault. It's just the business that you're in. And that's why you have to learn a strategic way to play them so that if they fail, you only lose a little. One trade. Two at the most. Okay, but really one trade. And if they work, then you make a lot. You have good, solid trades. So don't give up on the market if you don't get a good play every day or if you take a loss one day. Trading and making money trading is about playing the odds correctly in your favor when they set up and when you see them set up live in the day. If you do this over the course of a month, a week, and a year, you'll make money by staying on track with your strategy and game plan. And you have to have that, and you do have it because I've given you that. I've given you the strategy and the rules to follow. Now, the training plan part of it, the money management, those things, you do have to figure out yourself. I can help you. All in all, though, the strategy is intact for you to follow. And if you start to deviate from that, you're going to have problems. So you've got to stay on track. Now, this doesn't mean you can't do longs. I don't do longs, okay? I don't, I don't like to do longs. But if you want to do a long, you can do a long. But then it's only what? Bullish gaps that rate over 20 points that are in the direction of the gap, okay? You're not buying things that don't rate high. You still have to stick to the general philosophy of the strategy itself. But you can't go into this judgment and self-criticism I tell you, traders get gold stars for hating themselves. That, I, that is the one gold star I can pretty much give everyone I've ever talked to, ever, whether they've done my class or not. People are so critical of themselves. They, they really just, they hate themselves when they make a mistake. If you hate yourself every day you make a mistake, I don't know how you're going to get out of bed in the morning. You may as well just give up, okay? You cannot blame yourself every time something goes wrong. You're in a learning process. You're developing as a trader. You're developing these skills. Now, that's not to say you don't recognize when something happens. You say, oh, I, I made a mistake there. I shouldn't have done that. I actually should have lowered the stop on that thing. I should have got out of that when it was up that money. I should have done that. But shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. You just say, you know what? Next time. I'm not going to do that. Next time I'm going to do this and I'm going to put this in place for this, this, and this so this doesn't happen again. Okay, fine. That's what a rational intellectual person does. 
not a crazy person where you go off the deep end and then you start hating yourself and you want to quit and you hate the market and you hate life. And then guess what happens? Do you think you're going to trade good then the next day or the next trade you take? No, no, you won't. This judgment and self-criticism, this loathing that traders tend to have for themselves of the market when they're in this process, you've got to let it go. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And I am speaking from personal experience. Okay, I'm speaking from personal experience, and I know each one of you a little bit, some of you more than others, but I know the things that people go through. I mean, some people criticize themselves for making mistakes and they lose. Some people criticize themselves for getting out too early and not making, not making enough, but they still made money. I mean, if you really want to criticize yourself, you could probably find something every single day that you did wrong trading. You got to just recognize that this is the business that it is. You will never be perfect every single day on every single thing. Gap pick, entry, exit, size, everything. Boom, 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 boom. When you stop, you won't. You won't. Every once in a blue moon, I do feel like something that I did was perfect. And then you know what? I don't take any other trades. So every once in a blue moon, I say, I can't, I just can't press the button again here. Where, where the money that I have is perfect, where the size I took was great, where I did all the ads and I had the right gap picked and the entries were killer and I got out good. I mean, there's just some days, some days that I feel like I can't, couldn't have done that any better. But you know what? Most of the time you will go back every day and you could find something to criticize yourself about and you can't live like that. Okay. Your boss, you wouldn't let your boss do that to you. If you went to a job every day and your boss reprimanded you every day, <gasps> you, you there, Tom, you didn't put that pencil back in the right spot at the pharmacy. I told you to put that drug in that pile. You didn't do it. Tom, you didn't handle that customer right. Tom, you should have talked to that person that way. Tom, go get this. Go get that. Tom, 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 Tom. Would you want your boss to yell at you every day for everything you did that wasn't perfect? No, you'd quit. You'd say, take this job and shove it. But, you know, you, you, but you do that to yourself when you're trading. That's essentially what you're doing to yourself. <laughs> Tom's saying that's why you worked the night shift. Otherwise, they'd fire you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if this was easy, Tom saying everyone would try it. Everyone would try it and then it wouldn't work. You know, I... I think that the reason that the money is so big, the money is so big because of the fact that there are so, so few people that get it. That's one of the reasons. Okay. That's one of the reasons. And also the nature of the market itself is that there's so much money, so much money, so much money in the market. I actually forgot to put this in here. This is making me think of it now. There was something on uh, MSN.com. It was two days ago. It had the top 10 wealthiest people in the United States. Their, most of their gains had doubled in value this year uh, for their wealth due to the market, due to the market. I actually was reading the article. I was going to put it in here. So, you know, there's a lot of money made in the market. Uh, Dave saying yesterday he's disappointed when he lost, but today he woke up like nothing happened to get ready to be focused and objective and disciplined and make good decisions. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's the right attitude. So what do you do, though, when they do work right? Well, that's easy. You celebrate and pat yourself in the back. Don't forget to always do that. You hear me do that to myself here in the room. Give yourself credit. Good job. Good job, Philip. Good job, Brett. Good job, you say to yourself. Okay? Pat yourself in the back. And if you're by yourself, talk to yourself for Pete's sakes. Because you deserve a pat in the back for doing this and taking good trades. Even if you're following me, you still took the trade. Don't forget that. All right. Pat yourself on the back for making the right decisions, taking the size if you're doing it, getting out the right place, making the quick exits if the thing reverses, doing the right actions. And don't start getting lazy. This is a this is a hard time of the year for this. I mean, Diane's been noting this. It's, you know, you could get lazy here around the around this time of the year because there's not a lot going on. And you want to be sharp, you want to stay sharp. Maybe the best thing sometimes is to take a day off when there's no uh, volume in the market. When you have days and days and days in a row where everything works right and perfect, though, don't start to get complacent with your discipline. Sometimes I've noticed that with myself. I feel like I can't do anything wrong, and all of a sudden, then the market bites me in the butt, and I said, oh, mm, I, I, let's get on track here. You always have to stay sharp. You have, to, you have to start sharp forever. It's like if you were a doctor and you were a surgeon, 
<laughs> you can't like say, oh, I'm this famous doctor. I make all this money. I went to med school. I know everything in the world. I have all these patients. Everything's great. The doctor still has to go in and prepare for surgery, wash up. He has to be alert, awake. His brain has to be working. He has to know what to do. Like he is tested every time he, you know, goes into the operating room. It's not like he can just get lazy one day. Somebody might die or he might get sued or he might lose his job and lose everything because someone will sue him if he doesn't do something right. You know, you this training, you got to be on. You got to be sharp all the time, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Okay, that's the great thing about gaps is that you only have to be sharp for a short period of time, a very short period of time. And I think that's really very helpful because you get tired as the day goes on, your eyes get tired, and it's harder to stay sharp. Right, Dave's pointing out something good. You're human. You're not robots. Ultimately, the goal in trading is to have longevity and consistency. If you have these things, you're going to make it because most people don't. Most people have zero consistency. I mean, I'm talking about zero. I mean, like, negative zero. Zero. Less than zero people have consistency. And very few people have longevity. Training is about consistency and longevity. If you want to have longevity, you need to produce consistent results. If you want to produce consistent results, you must stick to the plan and stay consistent with your trading and strategy. Okay? So it is about longevity and consistency. That doesn't mean a month. It doesn't mean a week. It doesn't mean two months. It means doing it and saying, I'm, I'm committed. Like, I'm committed to doing this. It's not going to take you 20 years. All right? We talked about this the other day in the Monday class, but I wanted to bring it up here because not everyone was here on Monday afternoon when we reviewed the examples. But someone brought this up. Oh, it was Diane. Diane brought it up where she was talking about black and white. And it made me think about this, and I thought, I've got to talk about this today because some of you people miss this. One huge misconception in the market is that the market is black and white. It is not. Whether this is a misconception or just a desire, like a desire that people have to, to want the market to be black and white, like maybe people just want it to be black and white so darn bad that they insist that it be. But you can insist all day long and for the rest of your life that the market be black and white and it won't. The market is not black and white. There is not one indicator you could use that would always work. There's no 100%. There's no guarantees. There's no getting around the risk. There isn't anything that works all the time, every single second, every single day, every single year, every single moment. The market isn't black and white. It's not. I don't know why I've never heard anyone say this before. I just came out of my mouth when I was talking on Monday and I thought, gosh, you know, this is really good because it is true and I've never heard anyone actually admit it. Why people don't want to admit this that are educators probably because they'll think that people then won't want to come be educated by them. But I'm nothing if not honest and the flat out truth is that I don't think you should want to be black or white. I think you should want to be like the market. And guess what? The market is. The market is gray. Gray is not a bad color, actually. I have a really pretty gray dress. I wore it to my high school reunion. It was very sexy. I was tan at the time. It was over the summer. I never thought I'd look good in gray. I looked amazing. So, you know, I mean, gray is actually a very pretty color. You got to learn how to wear it well. This gray area here is where the intuition is, the, the skill the, the uh, going outside of the box and seeing something different. This is where people don't want to live, don't want to be, don't want to trade, and yet this is exactly where you need to be. <laughs> Jean. So, you know, it, you know, this is where you need to live if you want to be successful. There isn't that many people living here. It's actually, uh, if you end up living here, you're going to have a big place because, uh, it's, it's really a, a very spacious area to live. It's just not a lot of people are here. This is finessing it, seeing things beyond, predicting things before they happen, seeing the targets before they get there, seeing what the market's going to do before it even announces a, a minute announcement, seeing that the gap is going to work today and then another one isn't going to work right at all. 
finessing your skill level, being in this gray area. And why do you want to do this? Because this is the market. Okay, so you want to be with the market, not against it. Here's against the market. Pick a side, black or white. Pick a side, pick a side, pick a side, pick a side. Here is where the market lives. The market lives in this gray area. So you need to coincide with this to profit from the market and from the moves of the market. And not only that, you have to accept this. This has to be an acceptance. I accept the fact that the market is in black and white. I accept the fact that some days I'll take a loss because the market is in black and white. I'll accept the fact that my strategy is great, and yet some days it's not going to work. Why? Because the market is gray, not black and white. And there is nothing in the market that is black and white. Nothing, 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 nothing. I had a conversation the other day with the person that had bought FIO that reached out to me then and he called me. And he's doing the class in January. He said, I have this thing, this, this indicator, I've been using it. It's been, I've been taking these trades. I've been using it. This thing, it told me to do the FIO. I did the FIO and now I have this loss in the FIO. I said, you know what? If this thing was so great that it would never make a mistake, that everyone would have it, okay? There is no such thing. There just is no such thing, okay? Just like the no, there's no machine. There's no machine, no black box, no, no, nothing with, you could find someone, I could find someone. If they, I could find someone. I could find someone because I know people that are, you know, very good at math. I, I could hire them to write an algorithm for me. Program the whole thing. It could be so complex, so amazing, so fantastic. Would it work all the time? No. Would it work better than me? No. Why? Because human beings are here. This is where the human beings are. And guess what? That is the market. The market is human beings. And even the black boxes and the machines in the market are programmed by human beings. We've been round and round and round about this before. So that's why you rely on a machine or an indicator. You rely on a black and white. You're not in cohesiveness with the market. If you go to yourself, you draw on yourself, you be this person, this person that has the finesse, that has the skill, that has this golden touch. This golden touch. This is a golden touch. Okay? Tom bought me a really nice clock. He reminded me about it. I, I haven't packed it yet ready to go. He sent it to me for my birthday two, two years ago. He said, Missy's Golden Touch. He called it. He had it engraved for me. <laughs> this is where you need to be. Call it whatever you want to call it for yourself. You've got to get this, this, this skill, this finessing about it. And because this is where humans live. Okay, this is where human beings live. And I don't want to be judgmental about perfect or not perfect because I feel sometimes that these things are perfect. They're gray, but perfect. Okay, this isn't about judging something's perfect or not perfect. As far as that, human beings, as human beings, we are perfect. We are perfect, whole, and complete as human beings. We live in a gray area, and the market lives in the gray area because the market is made up of humans who trade it. And so once you get this and move past this black and whitishness, you're going to, you're going to, your, your, your brain's going to explode. It's going to go, phew, now I see it. I see everything. I see it so clearly. Yes, bring me the information market. Bring it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Tell me the points. And you'll see them. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm not paying any attention to Tibix. Twenty-seven, a twenty-one zero. You know what? Let's put it at twenty-one ten. Here, twenty-one ten for Tibix. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I, I just I just lowered it a couple of pennies. I think we still have to give a ten. It's actually it's, this really isn't doing anything wrong. This is tw it's twelve thirty. It's twelve thirty in the afternoon. But I just put it to 2110. All right. So anyways, th this, is a this is a very important piece and thing, to, I think, to understand about trading, and, and, you know, and understand about the market. I think it's helpful. Okay, so think about what I'm saying. You must be willing to go to that special place to be successful in the market. The special place is in yourself. It's not in me. It's in me for myself. It's in you for yourself. You have to find that special place. How are you going to be successful if you're not willing to take risk? Part of that risk is going to that place within yourself. 
Achieving success means removing the blockages towards success, whatever they may be, and not allowing setbacks to guide your decisions because they happen to everyone and you're going to have to live with them in life. It's about the choices that you make. They were not present when you made the choice the decision to initially trade, so those setbacks were not there when you were getting motivated. Success does not come without taking a risk and making an effort. Part of their effort means continuing to move forward and to stay positive when you are tested in your trading. If there was no risk involved in trading and in life, everyone would be successful. And the fact is that not everyone is. Not everyone is successful in trading and not everyone is successful in life. And just because you're not successful now in trading doesn't mean you'll never be. Just because you're not successful now in life doesn't mean you'll never be. You have to start thinking and acting like you are successful. If you're successful right now, then great. You're still going to keep it up, all right? It's not like the job is done. If you're, if you're not successful right now, it doesn't mean you won't be successful tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. And you have to think with an attitude that you are successful right now. You are at the place that you want to be even if you're not, so that you can get there. I love this picture. I, I use it so much. The cheese stands alone. This guy here, he obviously is a traitor. I mean, he obviously is. He would never look like this if he wasn't. And by the way, he gets up at 8 o'clock in the morning. I mean, this is preparation here. He's got the hat on. If he didn't have the helmet on, if he just if he rolled out of bed at 9, 9.15, he wouldn't have enough time to get the helmet on, and he probably would get hurt this thing would hurt him. So this is a prepared person and he's ready to take risk. And he realizes that, you know, not every piece of cheese is he going to get without getting uh, a little nick in this or chip in the helmet. Sometimes he's going to take a knock on the head, but it's worth it in the end because he feeds himself and he feeds his family all year long with these cheeses. You know, it's about going after it, going after it, going after it. Who is the power? Who is the powerful people? The people that go after it. I'm going after it. You got to go after it. Go after it. Take advantage of the power that's in the market. Take advantage of the power of the gap. Take advantage of the power of the golden gap system that I taught you. Learn what conviction means because that enhances your own personal power. And you got to feel it. It's a feeling. It's a knowing. The power of information, the power of knowledge, and not only that, the power of you. In the end, you are powerful. Just like we talked about earlier, who's the best person to make decisions about you? You. Who's the best person to make decisions about your, your life? You. The power of you. It's important, and this is what trading is about. If you really want to do it, you can. If you want to quit, you can too. You have that much power that you could quit. Here, I'm giving you the power to quit. That's still a powerful decision. Do you understand? So you have to decide, and if you have, if you know you're powerful, then you may as well just decide you want to win. So if you know you're powerful, then decide that you can do it. You may as well use the power for good to help your life, to enhance your life, to be something more. Ultimately, this is about the power of the human spirit. The power of the human spirit is the power within you. You are the one with the power. You, you and only you. Your human spirit is so powerful. You have the power within yourself to follow a disciplined trading plan Make money in the market and keep yourself motivated during personal setbacks. You can control your destiny by making a choice in your spirit not to allow anything, nothing, nothing at all to stand in the way of your training success. And if you're willing to do that, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. And part of this has to do with the power of intention. When you have a clear vision, clear intention, and a plan of action in place, you can use the power of intention to assist you in creating the trading results you desire. So get clear. Again, the clarity. Intentionally works with complete clarity and focus. I have a vision. I know I want to accomplish this. I know I'm going to do it. Focus on one or two stocks in the morning. Focus on one strategy. Focus by being in the live trading room with me. Focus on your entries, focus on your size, focus on your stops. Focus on how much money you want to make on the day. All of these things will help you get and stay clear and motivated. You know, this was the trade from the, the CIE yesterday. Time is important in the market in reference to our daily routines. Where we take a trade and where we get out of a trade has huge meaning on a daily basis for us as traders. Time is a big deal. Reversal times, entry times, exit times, time, time in the open. Anything that happens between 9.30 and 10 o'clock determines whether or not I even like or take a gap on the day. 
uh, timing of the things that happen pre-market, timing of the things when the market has reports coming out, timing of the market rallies, timing of everything. At time and the market are like bonded. Time has a lot to do with our positions every day when we are trading in, in the market. In the live day, time is unbelievably important. I can't tell you how often I'm looking at the clock. If someone actually videoed me and where my eyes were of all the time that I'm trading or even looking at stuff. I, I look at the clock so often, I cannot even tell you. I, I look at the clock so often. Not down here, but I'm looking at the clock up here. Okay? Looking at the clock. But the one thing is, and, and this is very important, that time in the world, as important as it is for things that we have planned and things that we want to do and schedules that we make and appointments that we have and, you know, all the things we have going on with our life, with our families and everything else, and, and the, the actual market that we trade, in the end, we have to find this balance between time in the market, time in our world, and the time and expectations. In the spirit world, there is no such thing as time. Time does not exist. So in the ethereal world, there is no such thing as time. In our physical world and in the market trades that we do, time is important. But in the ethereal world, in the spirit world, there is no such thing as time. So the, the difficulty is when we have expectations, we have, we have expectations, we have... These things called expectations where we say, I expect myself to do this and make this much money in this much of a time frame. The problem is that in the spirit world, it has no, uh, no, it doesn't even recognize time. It doesn't, there isn't, it's not, it doesn't even exist. I was just watching a, a Twilight Zone episode the other week. It was a Martian. There's a lot about Martians. And the Martian came in and he sat down at this diner. And the person at the diner said, why aren't you wet? There was an accident and he fell off into the, into the lake. The Martian said, what do you mean wet? The Martian didn't even know what the concept of wet meant. It would be like if you asked somebody about time in the spirit world. They'd say, I don't know what you mean. I, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean by time? The, it, it, there, there isn't any meaning to that in the spirit world. In the long range a uh, larger picture of thing. This idea of having expectations tied with time is, is challenging for traders, okay? So you can achieve your goals. You can achieve your goals. Having high goals is, is totally great, and I think I, I, I encourage you to have those. The issue comes when people have high expectations that they feel they must meet within a certain period of time, and then it goes to the point where it's feeling the pressure. And then the pressure comes on you, and then you may not do the right things to even meet the goals in the first place. And you have to almost think like you're living in the spirit world with your expectations, where you carry on, you have faith, you move forward, you do what you need to do, and lo and behold, you meet the expectations. They may not be within the time frame that you want them to happen, but you're going to make them anyways. I find that many people that trade have high expectations for themselves, which is great, but they have high expectations for themselves and unrealistic time and expectations. So I want you to think about this going into 2014, okay? You got to have goals. Expectations are fine. High ones are good too. If your timing requirements are, are, are off, then you may get unmotivated like we were talking about earlier. And it may affect you in a negative way. And there's no reason for that. Because in the larger picture in the spirit world, in the ethereal world, there is no such thing as time. You will go on your path. You will find your place in this, in this trading. You will be on your journey. You will meet your expectations. You will meet your goals. You, if you're destined to do it, you will. If destiny has it for you, you'll do it. The timing may not be what you think. Again, I'm speaking from experience. The timing of the time when I started to figure this out uh, when I started at the beginning till the time I figured it out was far, far more time than I ever thought it should have taken me and didn't meet my expectations, okay? 
From the time I decided I wanted to do this to the time I figured the stuff out I'm doing now that makes me money, it took me longer than I thought, longer than anyone thought, but I still did it. And if I had given up before I made it, then I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be training. I wouldn't be teaching you. I wouldn't be impacting a lot of people's lives. So destiny was I was meant to do it. It did not meet my time expectations. But in the ethereal spirit world, it was my destiny to figure this out. So I want you to think about that when you're going through this process, if you're feeling like you are not meeting your own expectations. So it's it's a time is a conundrum because in the in the daily life of the market when we're taking trades it's very important but in the bigger picture you have to almost look at it in a in a in a in a sh bigger format go go beyond and think of it in the ethereal world I'd rather you do that than than lower your expectations I don't want you to not have have dreams and goals it's just the timing of it may not be what you think. But that's because there is no concept of time in the spirit world. If it's your destiny to do it, you're going to do it. Okay, so the true meaning of time is really to focus on the trades in the market that we're doing. That's how we're going to use time to our advantage. Getting in, getting out. Getting in, getting out. Getting the gaps in the morning, stopping. We're going to use time to our advantage there. That's the meaning of time for us to in the market, for us, for the money. But in the bigger picture... If you're too focused on the time of things with the money that you want to make, you you may get off course. You may get off track. You may lose purpose. You may not achieve the dreams then. You may give up. You may go down a different road. And, and maybe you're meant to go down a different road. I don't know. But I know if this is the road you chose, you chose it for a reason, and you got to stay on course. Okay? So don't veer off course because the timing doesn't meet your expectations. You can still achieve what you want in your goals, but maybe not in that time period. 2014 is going to be a big year. It's going to be a big year for me personally uh, because I'm moving back to New York. Uh, I'm moving back to New York actually before 2014, but I will be in, in New York for New Year's Eve. And it's going to be a big, big year for me. Big year for me with my trading. Big year for me for the business. And I hope that all of you are here with me to, to continue to learn with me and continue to trade in the room with me. So for 2014, my wish for you is that you have a brand new life filled with trading success. Whatever, whatever that is, whatever you want to achieve, my wish for you is that you achieve it. You've got to believe in who you are. You've got to believe in your dreams. Remember, the holidays really are about gratitude and joy. Be grateful. Be thankful. Be thankful for all the things you have, all the things you've learned this year. Not just for the things that you have, but the people in your life, the people that love you. What you learned this year, be grateful for yourself, for, for, for doing it, for doing it, for getting up every day and trading and learning and going through the process and sticking with it. Be grateful for what you know, for who you are. Be grateful you're alive. Just, just be happy that you're alive. Be in joy. So happy holidays. And thank you. And that's the end of the holiday message. Anyone still here? <laughs> How's everyone doing? Any comments? Any questions? Anything? You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. Hold on one second. I'm going to take this down. <laughs>